Designing websites doesn't have to take 20 plus hours anymore. With the power of AI, we can actually create websites pretty fast. And I wanna show you the seven step framework that I would use if I was creating a website today. That is the easiest and fastest way to launch a website. So the first thing I'll do is go to ChatGPT. I'm using 4.5. So if you go down to models, you can go to the 4.5 research preview. It's good for exploring ideas. And I was thinking of a AI assistant that when I go traveling, let's say I go to like Greece or uh, Turkey or somewhere with like ancient places, um, it would like pop up and it would give me some insights of that location I'm in. Like it would just send it automatically to my phone without me having to prompt anything. So let's just generate a name and an ID and then we can start building out the website design. So what I'm doing, I'm just giving a simple prompt. I'm describing that I need a product name and some copy for a website. I'm giving the context of the AI travel assistant and then I go into describing what the audience is and then the format I'd like it to um, give me the information so then I can uh, play around with it, make it easy to use that information to build a website. So I think this is good enough and I'm gonna press enter and wait for the GPT to give it back to me. So because I told it to put it in the table, this makes it a lot easier when I'm coming up with ideas. I don't want it to be messy. And so I wanna keep my brain clear. So it's giving me product names and website copy right next to it. I love some of these ideas like story hop, trip tales is good. They're just short and sweet. Um, you got a few other ones, uh, myth map, voice venture, tale trail. It's kind of cool as well. Um, but some of them sounded a bit gimmicky. So I think, I don't know, I think story hop is kind of cool. So just like that, we've got an idea. Now let's go into Reloom to plan our sitemap. So if you don't know Reloom, it's an AI site builder that plugs straight into Figma and also Webflow. It has a lot of components. You can also try it for free. I will put my affiliate link in the description below, but let's launch and let's type new project. And I'm going to give it what I had here. So I'll put story hop here and Put the information. Sorry, Hop is a AI travel assistant that connects with your phone. And I put that into there. And just want one to five pages. This will probably just be a landing page for now. I don't want to go too crazy. And I'm going to click generate sitemap. And really, we'll just do the, all the hard yard for you. <laughs> it will create the sections, create the layout, and then I can go in and customize the sitemap. So just like that, within like four seconds, I got a home page, about page, blog, and contact. For this, I just want a landing page. So I'll just click delete and delete those pages. And we can see we've got navbar hero, feature section, how it works, benefits and testimonials. And maybe I wanna add like another section. If I press plus, I can add things on the side here. So we've got pricing, we've got sort of a gallery here. We could also put like a logo list here. So I'll add that under the hero section. And what else? I think for now, that will be pretty cool. Now I'm just gonna go to the top and click wireframe and it's gonna start generating a wireframe based on that sitemap. So with all those sections that we had, it's going to generate a layout that we can bring into Figma and start designing. Now, before going deeper into the fun stuff, which is the design, I want to introduce you to this platform called Similar Web. They've kindly sponsored this video. It allows me to steal my competitors' data, website traffic, keywords, and anything I need to make sure that I can tweak the copy on my website, the content, or see what marketing channels my competitors are using. So whenever I'm working on a client site, I can easily see all the data. So what I do is go to website analysis in the website research section, click on website and I go to traffic and engagement. And then I just paste in the website of any of my competitors. I can also compare multiple websites. At the top, I can click the plus and put another website there as well. And what it will do, it will give me all the total visits, the ranking and all the traffic data that I need to see what's working on their website. So then I can tweak the design of my website and make it more effective when customers land on it. So you can see, I can see the monthly visits, unique visitors, returning visitors as well. And we can see Expedia is more dominating than kayak.com as we can see here. So you've got the orange and it's clearly labeled out the nice graph. I can scroll down and see the engagement over time, which is really nice. And it gives some other details all here in a nice table. We can see the bounce rate, the page views, the visitors, and all that really great data. And you can actually click on the tabs here to see all that. And if I go to the top corner, I can actually see the ranking. If I go to rank by, I can change it to global or country and I can see what's more popular. So if I'm designing for an Australian company, let's say you can see the rank for Expedia is higher than Kayak. So I'll probably use this one because the rank is lower. So it's more popular in Australia. So I would most likely look at that website and suss out, okay, what's working? What type of copywriting they use? What type of brand colors? And just see the overall layout. I can see it's got 
clean UI. They have a nice, you know, search bar right at the top. Um, they can look for flights, etc. So with that information, I can easily study my competitors and then make my website better. And then after seeing the traffic, I like to check out marketing channels, which is another great feature they have. It gives me all the channels they're using. If they're using ads, if they're using organic, or if they're using referrals, I can see that all here. So both of these sites are using organic, paid, and direct. Uh, if people searching on Google, and you can see we've got referrals and email, not so much. And we can see that all the data, all the biggest growth drivers. So it just gives you so much data, which I really like. So you can use this to your advantage. Now, if you actually wanna get the invisible insights from your competitors, I recommend trying SimilarWeb out. You can actually get a seven day free trial in the description below, I'll put a link. Try it out, this is great if you're working on your own personal website or a client website and you can get all that data. With that said, let's get back to doing our website design. So I have the wireframe in Reloom. We can see it's created this website, which is really cool. And I can go in here and change some of the design. So if I don't want this section, I can go change the header and we can see we can change it different headers like this. And if whatever I want, I can literally just click it and it will change it, which I think is really nice. So for example, with this section, we don't want that layout. I'm gonna just change the layout really quickly. Maybe I don't want too much text. I want something a little bit more in the cards or something like this. Um, or like maybe like a bento layout. This looks pretty cool. I'll select that, which looks nice. I'll scroll down and maybe I don't want this. I'll delete that. Put some testimonials there. Discover fingertips, this call to action. We will swap that out for something a bit nicer. Um, let's maybe do something centered like this which is looking great and sweet. Now, once I'm happy with that, all I gotta do is go to the style guide at the top and it'll actually create a design using fonts, colors, and everything I need to get that idea out of my head onto a working design that I can play around with and start designing in Figma and customizing the way I want it. So we've got here, I can press C and start shuffling the colors, really cool. If I wanna go back, I can go back to the wireframe and change the text. So for example, I wanna go back to GBT. I'm just gonna say, I wanna say shorten this for a hero headline, press enter, and I'm going to do this. Put that in, step into history and where you stand. I can left click and click ask AI. It can rewrite, make things shorter. I'm gonna make things shorter because people don't like reading lots of text when it comes to a web design. Replace that and beautiful. So far it's looking pretty good. The rest of it, I can, I think it's fine. I'll go back to the style guide and see what it looks like in dark mode. We've got light mode, we'll probably do light mode. And I'm gonna shuffle the colors again. Let's maybe go with a fun color palette. So we can shuffle that, we can left click and we can also put whatever color we want as well. Maybe we want like a green color or something. And the background could be maybe like a gray or something. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then once I like that color, I can just click the little lock button and we're good. The neutrals, just gonna be fine. And I'm gonna shuffle the fonts here. They use it from uh, Google Fonts, which is cool. They also have monotype as well, but I think this looks nice. Sign and color. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to click on the buttons and we can change the buttons to look any way we want. We can do elevated, we can do uh, brick which is nice as well, or bubble, or we can do simple gradient. And then the cards and images, we can see, we can do outlined, we can do default, and it'll adjust those designs. We can do edge, edgy. I think we'll do outlined, because it looks clean. And sweet. And then once we're done with this, all we gotta do is go to the top right. We can select where we want to export it to. I'm gonna say Figma, I'm gonna click export, and I'm going to open in Figma. So the third step is generating the web design using Reloom. So I'm just gonna make a new page in Figma, then I'm gonna go down to press Control K and we wanna click on the plugin and click Reloom. And this is how we import the design we just made. So I'm gonna go to the story hop, as we can see, edited two minutes ago, and make sure that you're on Figma Kit 3.2. Then we can click style guide and concept. I'm gonna click concept one and press continue. And I'll import my layout and template that we created. Boom, all done. And now all I gotta do is get rid of this and we've got our design right inside Figma. We've got the desktop and also the mobile version, which we would need to customize. So you can see this, we've got to bring that up and probably customize everything. But so far it's looking good. 
Now I want to start to bring in some images. So step number four is generate images. You can use AI, you can use something like Lumi, um, Dezine, Mid Journey. Uh, there's so many different tools out there really. So I started generating some IDs for like a Greek inspired um, design, sort of ethereal, you know, sort of just like a nice landscape with like a temple, like ruins or something or like a portal because the idea of like this AI assistant translates you um, or teleports you to this story, to this world. So I really like having something created like this. And so I just typed in a prompt, an ancient Greek landscape, the clouds, mystical colors, cinematic, lush ground with ruins. And I used a um, an image I found on Twitter as a reference. And there's a lot of different ones. I'm gonna say, um I'm being really descriptive and I'm saying add no text to the image. Hopefully it gets that in the style sensitivity. We can adjust this. So if you want like strong and then I'm going to click generate again, you can also do like variations. So we've got variations here and I'm trying to get a nice hero image because when you design a website, the first impression is the above the fold. So the thing that you see right when you land on the page, so the hero image and the fonts text, the style has to really look really good and just grab that attention. So creating an image like in uh, yeah, design or something like Lumi, can find a lot of cool stuff. So if I, let's just say I type in ancient Greece ruins or something in the illustrations tab for this, we can find a lot of cool stuff. And we could use this as a reference if you wanted to. Uh, if you like a style um, that we're vibing with, um, we can pick that and I'll just like right click and download that. But for now, we'll just stick with the zine for now. We've got some more options, we've got portal doors, it's really cool. And then these ones here. Once I'm happy with the design, I'm going to just download this JPEG and we're going to upscale it. Let's just go four times upscale it. Then what I'll do is I'll drop that image into Photoshop because I don't want the text. So what I'm going to do is just select around the text and just click generate a fill. I don't have to add anything. Usually it will just remove the text because it understands uh, content awareness. So it should remove that text. Oh, boom. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same for here as well. I don't want this text up the top. Cool. And then what we can actually do is we can just merge all that into one layer. And then I'm going to press uh, Control Alt C for the canvas. <clears throat> and it's really big. So I'll just go to 560 by 1440, or you can do 1920 by 1080. And, and then I'm going to scale it down like this. And then I'm going to just quickly make some color adjustments. I like using Camera Roll Filter. And I like to do, we can uh, play the exposure, bump the contrast up, bump the shadows up make it a bit more lighter and then colors we can go vibrance and we can also go saturation so it just depends sometimes I like vibrance and adding a bit of saturation like this and then we can adjust the color temperature like this and then effects we can add grain if we want so maybe you like a bit of grain make it look a bit more nostalgic and the texture will bump that up and I think overall like the white's a bit wider press ok and you can see the difference there that it makes which is really cool once I'm happy with the adjustments I'm just gonna go and drop that in and I'll go back to Figma and I'll just come into here, drop this image in, boom, and then we have it. So I've gone ahead and updated the logo, the images, the text, and you can spend hours doing this, but just by spending you know, 30 minutes um, to an hour, you can create something like this. As you can see, just keeping it really simple. Updated the images. I have to update some of these icons as well, which I haven't done, but that's fine. And once we have this, the next step is create a Figma site. So I have my design here and if you go to the plus, you can go down to site. It's currently in beta and I've already gone ahead and got it right here. So I've got the desktop view. I'm going to go back to my design and just control C. And what I want to do, I'm just going to extend this a little bit and I'm going to paste it inside the desktop layer on the left hand side, press control V and I'm just going to line everything up. So we'll just drag it, make sure it all snaps like that. And I'll delete this one. And there we got our desktop primary which is awesome so we've got our design there and then now all i gotta do is i'll add a few things so i can click on this image and click make interaction with code on the top right and all i gotta do is like do um, a smooth zoom in hover effect you can just say zoom in and it will still recognize it and now what it's going to do is the ai is going to add an effect for me i don't have to go manually add an animation or anything like that it just does it so there tells you what it did. And now if I put my mouse over, you can see it's got this nice little zoom effect. If I get out of this, now I press play. 
You can see if I put my mouse over, it's got this cool hover effect on the image, which I think is super dope. And all the buttons, um, I haven't added any effects, but we can go um, and click on a button here, go into the right side, click interactions and click hover effect. And now you can see we can add ease in and out. So we can change the transition. We can make it maybe 200 milliseconds. Um, scale, we can do 1.1. And I think that's fine. Now I'll go back to the preview and there you have it. When you put your mouse over the download now, you can see that button is working. I can also make this button go down to a section. So I'm gonna go to interaction and I'm gonna go to scroll two and we can actually select any of these layouts that we have. So let's maybe go to the testimonial section and I'm gonna press the play button. So now if you just hover over it, it will take you there, but we don't want that just hover effect. So what we wanna do is you can see while pressing, mouse enter, mouse leave, mouse down. So um, obviously we would want on click, but for now we'll just go while pressing and you can see as you press the button, it will go to that section. And that's a quick way to add some interactions. And then what I'll do is add a interaction of a marquee, which is just like a slider, logo slider. I can make it very fast. And maybe we wanna go that way. And now let's preview it. And just like that, we have a logo slider. Super cool, I think that looks really good. And we can go ahead and animate all these other little sections. You know, we can add parallax, reveal, hover effects. You can do a whole bunch of uh, crazy things. But let's just say we're ready to upload our design. Maybe I want to add some links in here. You can put pages there, whatever. And now what we can actually do is we can click the plus button in the top right corner of that frame and we can add a tablet view or mobile view. Let's just add a mobile view and we'll take our design and put it on a mobile view and we'll have to come here and edit uh, the design. So if you have a auto layout, we can come in here and adjust everything. And we basically want to stack things, adjust the font sizing, and we'll only apply those changes to the mobile version. So it'll take some time to go through. Uh, I think some of the other sections look pretty good. Just have to extend the, to the footer. So overall, it's pretty good. We just have to update, as I said, some of the fonts, some of the sizing. But then we could press play to preview it. And you can see how it will scale down. It's not 100% responsive. You can just click publish you can always update it and we can actually see our site live ready to go on the web as you can see some of those designs there there's little hover effects and obviously it's not finished because it will take a lot more work but pretty cool to see how you can create a website super quick so yeah thanks so much for watching and if you do want to try out similar web i do have a link in the description below thanks to them for sponsoring this video and if you want to see another video where i build a website from scratch then check out this video right here.